Riyadh, no doubt that uh, uh, transplant and surgery are considered the uh, curative intents. But RFA is also a curative uh, approach. Uh, so please tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt that uh, in the last uh, few years, ablation sort of has gained uh, in the sort of level of evidence and people have started to recognize it as a potentially curative option in that you can ablate sort of a small area uh, of the liver without undergoing resection. So bypassing the complications of possible surgery and potentially offering it to patients that wouldn't be candidates as the ones that uh, Richard and Laura sort of were alluding to. So recently now ablation has now been moved way ahead of uh, resection for small lesions in the, in the guidelines. Uh, sort of recognizing that there certainly is a role here and you can achieve complete pathologic necrosis, good quality of life uh, done safely, and again, uh, uh, eliminating or, 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 or uh, mitigating the, the use of general anesthesia and major, major surgery. So this is clearly something that is being adopted now in practice worldwide. And can you comment on alcohol injection, which is rather an old practice? Yeah, so, so alcohol uh, injection is sort of one of the old practices uh, certainly uh, uh, developed in the, uh, in the East. Uh, and the idea is the, is the simplicity of it, the needle injection. There are now needles that are developed where you can inject the alcohol sort of in a more uniform manner. There is no real survival benefit demonstrated comparing alcohol com uh, to, uh, to RFA and, and pretty much worldwide now RFA and microwave, I would add, uh, have really uh, uh, been the primary ablative modalities that are used for the liver for, uh, for, uh, for small early stage HCC. Great. And uh, Katie, in, in all those three situations, transplant, surgery, RFA, the patient is going to, of course, come to you and say, what's next? What can happen? So any role for adjuvant therapy? Right, so this is a, a really tricky question because particularly depending on um, some of the prognostic markers and including the number of tumors, whether there was vascular invasion at explant after a transplant or after surgery, um, there, there is still a high risk for recurrence with this cancer, um, and some more so than others. Um, unfortunately, we have yet to find a, a definitive therapy to really help prevent that or reduce that risk. There's certainly a role for close surveillance in hopes that we can potentially do another intervention if, if there is a recurrence. But um, the, the one proven systemic therapy at this time for advanced liver cancer or unresectable liver cancer, which is the multikinase inhibitor serafinib, unfortunately has been studied in the adjuvant setting in a, in a large randomized phase three trial called the STORM trial, which recently reported in 2015. And it showed really no benefit in reducing recurrence or improving survival after curative surgery or curative ablation in high-risk patients. And so right now we don't have a systemic therapy or a medical oncology intervention to help change the fate of these, these treatments afterwards. And we, we rely on close surveillance and hoping that we'll have a, ch a chance to do a second intervention if we catch a recurrence early. Great. So to summarize that first part, uh, so we heard uh, other than the academic debate, so there are really three interventions that can be used for curative intent in HCC. Uh, surgery, liver transplant, and RFA. And also we heard that uh, there is no role for an adjuvant therapy at this point in time, but of course uh, there's a key and uh, continued interest in that regard, and I wouldn't be surprised that we're gonna uh, notice that there will be more um, uh, clinical trials looking into different uh, venues from that regard, and we'll probably co cover a little bit later in the program some of those.